Hello students, today we are going to discuss the following topics under the chapter Molecular Basis of Inheritance, Properties of Genetic Material, RNA World, Replication of DNA. In the previous class, we have studied the nature of genetic material, the chemical nature of the genetic material and how it was proved that DNA is a genetic material. So now let us study in detail what are the properties of the genetic material. Now we have to go back to the central dogma which was proposed by Francis Crick. What does this central dogma says? This says that DNA forms RNA and RNA forms protein. To understand the properties of genetic material, let us first recall the differences between DNA and RNA. To understand the properties of genetic material, let us first recall the differences between RNA and DNA. In DNA, the sugar is deoxyribose sugar. On the other hand, in RNA, the sugar is ribose. Another very important difference that in DNA, the pyrimidines are cytosine and thymine, while on the other hand, in RNA, the pyrimidines are uracil and cytosine. So, thymine replaces uracil in RNA. Another important difference that you can see, the DNA is double stranded, on the other hand, the RNA is single stranded. The second important property of genetic material, the material is able to replicate, that it can make its own copy. The third important property of genetic material, that it should be chemically and structurally stable. As we have discussed in the detailed structure of DNA, that the presence of hydrogen bonds between the nitrogenous bases. These hydrogen bonds confer the stability on the genetic material. The next important property of genetic material is, there is a scope for mutation for evolution. But there is another important interesting fact is that the RNA mutates faster than DNA. So, why mutation is important? Now, you see the mutation we have studied in the previous class that the mutation gave rise to variation and these variation give rise to evolution. The next important property of the genetic material is that the genetic material is able to express. Let us go back to the central dogma where we find the DNA forms RNA and RNA forms protein. That means the messages coded in the DNA is transcribed into RNA and the RNA messages is translated into protein. Now, since we know that DNA is more stable and therefore it is preferred for the storage of genetic information. On the other hand, the RNA is better for transmission of genetic information. Now, a very important question arises in our mind that which is the first genetic material, whether it is DNA or RNA. Now, let us go through some important facts about the RNA. It has been found that RNA is essential for certain life processes like metabolism, translation, splicing. Second, the RNA acts as catalyst in some biochemical reactions. Now, since RNA is single stranded, it is very reactive and being very reactive, it is unstable. So, looking into all these features of RNA, the biologists think that DNA is evolved from RNA by modification. DNA is double stranded, it is more stable. Another important thing, the DNA has complementary strength and it has an inbuilt process of repair which is called proofreading. All these evidences showed that RNA is the first genetic material. That means RNA appeared first and by modification it has given rise to DNA because the DNA is more stable than RNA. Now let us see that how DNA replicates. It means to produce a similar copy. Now there have been three models of replication suggested. Now we have to decide that which one is correct. It has been suggested by different biologists, but then it was experimentally proved that which one is the correct one that we will study further. 
Now, there are three models have been suggested. The one was conservative, second semi-conservative and third dispersive. Now, as you can clearly see in the picture, conservative means both the strands of the DNA were conserved, they were saved and new strands were produced. On the other hand, as you can see in semi-conservative, out of the two strands, one strand is the parental one on which a new strand appeared. So, the new strands which were formed were half old and half new. That is why it is called semi-conservative. On the other hand, in the dispersive, we have interbetween old and new strands. Now, let us see how it was experimentally proved that which model is the correct one. So, what we see in the semi-conservative application, the two strands separate, the new strands are produced on each in which the one is parental and the one is new. The experimental proof of semi-conservative mode of replication was given by Messelson and Stahl in 1958. They grew E. coli in heavy nitrogen isotope N15 for many generations. After that, they transferred to N14 medium. The DNA was extracted from daughter cells, purified and centrifuged. Now, in the second generation, the cells were allowed to divide again. Now, let us see what were the results they obtained. There were two types of DNA, 50 percent were the hybrid DNA and 50 percent with light DNA. Now, as you can see clearly in the picture that in the zero generations, when they used N15, you can see the position of the band which was at the bottom of the centrifuge. On the other hand, in first generation, there was a hybrid DNA was produced. This hybrid DNA contained N14 and N15 DNA. On the other hand, in the second generation, when it was again centrifuge, a light DNA appeared above the hybrid DNA. So, what they concluded that each daughter DNA molecule contains one old, which is a parental one and one new strand. Now, there are two options as you can see in the picture. After one generation, there are two test tubes, one shows the semi-conservative and the other shows the conservative. In semi-conservative, only one band appeared after one generation, but in the conservative, there would appear two bands, but they observed only one band that was the hybrid DNA. After many generations, what they observed that in the case of semi-conservative, there is a light band which appeared above the hybrid band. If it would have been conservative, the pattern would have been the same. This again gave the conclusive proof that the replication of DNA is semi-conservative. Now, let us see that how DNA replicates. We have studied that the DNA replication is semi-conservative. Now, we go into the mechanism of the DNA replication. Now, let us first study the tools of replication. So, what we require during the DNA replication? Enzymes, the DNA strands, a primer. These are the important tools of replication. And what is the time of replication? It is during the S phase of cell division. Now, let us have a look on some of the important enzymes which help in DNA replication. The first, the very important enzyme is DNA polymerase, primase, ligase. Now, let us have an insight into the steps of replication. The first step is the breaking of hydrogen bonds between the bases. Now, where does this breaking stops? Especially the splitting stars at the AT rich places. Now, can you guess why? If you remember that A and T has a double bond. On the other hand, G and C has triple hydrogen bonds. So, it is very easy to break at the AT level. The enzymes are helicase and the splitting stars at the origin of replication. So, when the replication starts, it gives rise to a replication fog. Now, let us understand the process with the help of the following diagram. So, this diagram shows the origin of replication. 
Here at a particular site which is the origin of replication, the enzyme helicase comes and bind. Also DNA binding proteins also help in unwinding or unfolding of the DNA strands. Now as the DNA strands unwind, replication bubbles are formed. Now you can here you can see the helicase enzyme, how does it work? The helicase enzyme, it binds to the two DNA strands and it helps in the formation of replication fork. In the following diagram you can see the replication fork is complete. In the step 2, this includes the formation of RNA primer by the enzyme primase. Now these primase enzyme attract RNA nucleotides. This bind with DNA by hydrogen bonds. Now look into the picture where the RNA primer is formed with the help of the primase enzyme. This primer is the nucleotide, RNA nucleotide which is based on the DNA strands which is shown in green color. Now once the initiation has taken place, the next step is elongation. Now this elongation process is different for 5 to 3 prime and 3 to 5 prime templates. This is very important. From 5 to 3 prime template, the enzyme DNA polymerase adds continuously nucleotides and therefore the daughter strand is called the leading strand. As it is very clear from the picture, here you can see the leading strand where the formation of DNA nucleotides is continuous. On the other hand, on the other strand, there is a lagging strand where the DNA nucleotides are added in fragments. Now these fragments are called Okazaki fragments. The next step is the removal of RNA primers. In lagging strand, the DNA polymerase 1 has exonucleus activity that reads fragments and remove the RNA primers. The gaps are closed by DNA polymerase and DNA ligase. This is very clear in the following picture where the RNA primers are removed and the gaps are sealed. So this particular diagram shows that how the two strands have been formed. The one is the leading strand and the one is the lagging strand. The lagging strand having the Okazaki fragments. Now this particular diagram, this shows the collaboration of the enzymes, topoisomerase, the helicase, the primase and the ligase. So now we have a new double helix, the one old and one new. Now another very important feature in the DNA that DNA has an inbuilt repair mechanism. If anything goes wrong, that means if any mutation occurs in the DNA, it can repair by itself. And this process is called the proof reading of DNA. So now let us have the summary of the topics. The DNA is more stable than RNA. The genetic material is one which replicate, chemically and structurally stable, can mutate and able to express. RNA is the first genetic material. DNA replication is semi-conservative. DNA replication include initiation, elongation and termination and replication requires various enzymes and factors. So let us have a small quiz now. In RNA, thymine is replaced by which directly calls for protein synthesis whether it is DNA or RNA. Why biologists believe that RNA is the first genetic material? During which phase the DNA replicate? Which enzyme helps in unfolding of DNA? What do you mean by semi-conservative mode of replication? So in the next class, we are going to have the topics transcription, types of RNAs and genetic code. Thank you. Thank you.